So first of all, to uh, know how to do the pudendal nerve block, we need we need to explain uh, some information about the anatomy of the pudendal nerve. So all of us know that a pudendal nerve is the nerve that supplies the pineal area, and it actually comes from the sacral plexus, from uh, S two, three, and four, and uh, the fibers of the nerve itself contains both motor and sensory and some, some autonomic nerves as well. And the course um, of the perineal nerve is very characteristic that it will leave the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen and then turn around the, the, the ischial spine and then enter the perineal area through the lesser sciatic foramen. Okay? And after that, it will go into branches, the terminal branches, which are the dorsal nerve, nerve of clitoris, the perineal branch, and the inferior rectal nerve. So where exactly we are going to block the nerve? We don't intend to block it after its branching. We usually block the trunk itself. So we need to block the whole nerve, okay? So um, we will target the uh, trunk of the budendal nerve at the level of ischial spine to block everything, okay? But put on your mind that the perineal nerve does not supply the anterior parts of the perineum. If you remember the uh, single best answers of the anatomy question in part one exam, I don't know if you can remember, but uh, the anterior part of the perineal area sometimes supply, uh, is supplied with the ilioinguinal and genitofemoral nerves as well. So we need, a, a, like if we put the, the uh, budendal nerve block and we need to do anything in the anterior part of the perineal area, we, we need to infiltrate it as well, okay? So that's very important to know. And uh, the other thing that we have to know that like as an, uh, an anatomical um, knowledge that every uh, nerve is always, always accompanying the vessels, the vein and the artery. So the pudendal nerve and the artery came close to the nerve. So we need to be careful not to um, injure the budendal nerve while we are injecting the uh, local MGT, okay? Because if we just break the artery and inject the, um, the local analgesia, this will cause intravasation of the local anesthetic, and this will cause severe complications and it may be fatal. Otherwise, if we realize that we are in the artery, Sometimes, uh, even if we came outside, this may cause some hematoma, and uh, sometimes uh, this hematoma may extend to the ischiorectal fossa and these areas, okay? So we need to be so careful. We, we, we will tell during the techniques what we are going to do, okay? So what are the indications of within the nerve block? It's a method of regional analgesia, okay? Uh, in case of there is severe pain in the second stage of labor, or if we are going to do uh, an instrumental delivery, for example, in uh, the second stage of labor, or if we are going to do a perineal repair, usually for the perineal repair, we will just infiltrate the perineal area but sometimes we uh, put the budendal nerve block as a method of analgesia, okay? And sometimes if we are going to do some minor procedure in the uh, perineal area, like if there is uh, a cyst or anything need to be removed, sometimes we do it under the block of budendal nerve, okay? And what are the contraindications for the nerve block? Actually, uh, because we are injecting uh, lidocaine, so the, the first of all, 
that, that the patient should not be allergic to the lidocaine. And if the patient ha is having active infection at the moment, we will not do that because this will in introduce the infection and maybe causing um, abscess, which is deep in the pelvis. And if the patient is having any coagulopathy or bleeding tendency, because with breaking hair, uh, this may cause severe bleeding. And also if the patient is uncooperative because the technique is difficult. So if the patient is uncooperative, this may cause uh, injury either to the vagina or to the baby even because you will inject between the fetal head and the perineum and also uh, or the fetal head and the vagina I mean and also sometimes it may uh, cause needle break for the doctor himself because it's like a very narrow part and if the patient is uncom uh, uncomfortable or uncooperative she may move uh, and this injury can happen okay so First of all, uh, before we start, we have to ensure that uh, everything uh, is done properly. We need to take the consent from the lady. And uh, if we are doing it in the room, we will take a verbal consent. So if the lady only agree, we will do it. Otherwise, if she is not willing to have this kind of analgesia, we will not do. And then, uh, we will ensure that the equipments uh, are present. So what we need, we need 20 milli of 1% lidocaine, okay, inside the syringe. So we have a special needle, this one, used for dental nerve block. As you can see, it's a very long um, guard and this is the needle so the lower the lower picture showing the needle which is inside the uh, the metal tube or uh, the the cage and the upper one is the needle itself when we remove it it is like that okay and this uh, kind of needle is a special one and it is called Iowa trumpet okay it's a special kind of needle called Iowa trumpet and this needle is used in this way. So it will be guarded because if we introduce the needle directly to the vaginal uh, wall, it may cause injury, okay? So we need to ensure that the needle is present, lidocaine is present, all the instruments ready for vaginal birth, and uh, if this needle is not available, what we need to do, we can use uh, a spinal needle, okay? Uh, this spinal needle should be six inch long and 20 to 22 gauge, okay? So, uh, and we can't use a spinal needle uh, bared like that. We need to put it in a plastic uh, guard okay to be guarded needle so we will never ever do the put in the nerve block unless we have a guarded needle either through the Iowa trumpet needle or through a spinal uh, a spinal needle with guarded or plastic guard guard okay and uh, in terms of the technique itself so we have two methods the first one is the transvaginal method and the other one is the transperineal. So as you can see, the transvaginal approach that we are going to introduce the needle from inside the vagina, and the transperineal uh, approach is that we are going to insert the needle from outside through like, uh, we will feel the ischial tuberosity and go just behind it, okay? So first of all, we will uh, why we why we need to use either approach of 
both of them. So suppose I'm uh, having a space inside, so I can use the transvaginal approach because it's more uh, feasible and more safer. But if there is no space, the head is very or deeply engaged and I can't reach the ischial spine, so it's better to, to do it from the transperineal approach. If I'm doing it for a vaginal delivery and an instrumental delivery and like uh, perineal repair, so I prefer the transvaginal approach. But if I'm going to do a minor procedure in the perineum, for example, I can do the transperineal approach. Okay. Uh, the most common approach used is the transvaginal one. So we will uh, position the patient in the lithotomy position as usual, and uh, we will load the syringe, okay, and uh, we'll put it away, and then we will uh, insert two fingers, okay, on the lateral vaginal wall and try to feel the ischial spines. Usually, the ischial spines can be felt on either vaginal walls, uh, like at four and eight o'clock, okay? So we try to find where is the ischial spine. And um, we will introduce the Iowa trumpet, okay, on our hand. And when we feel that the ischial spine will go one centimeter below and the medial to the ischial spine, then we will introduce the needle, okay? So first we'll put the guard and then we will introduce the needle once we feel that we are one centimeter below and medial to the ischial spot. Okay, and we'll do like which hand we are using. If you see this picture, so this is, if this is the right side of the patient, so I'm introducing the fingers of my right hand to the right side of the patient and the opposite. So if I'm doing the right side of the patient, I will introduce the two fingers of my right hand. And if I'm doing the left side of the patient, I will introduce the two fingers of my left hand. Okay? This is very important because this will give you like a more sensible uh, technique. So you will put the index and the middle finger and then you slip the needle or the guard in between the two fingers okay as you can see here and uh, actually this guarded needle will limit the depth of penetration of the needle to one centimeter and um, this is minimizing the tissue injury that's why we need to use a special kind of needle Okay, and then please take care while you are injecting the local anesthesia that you are not exceeding the maximum dose for the lady. Do you know what is the maximum dose of lidocaine? So usually uh, the, if lidocaine is going to be injected without epinephrine, the maximum dose should be 4.5 milligram per, kilo, per kg, and if it is with epinephrine, will be 7 milligram per kg, and the maximum dose should not exceed 300 milligram. Uh, be aware of that because you know sometimes if you inject the whole thing and the pudendal nerve block failed to um, like do the, 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 the job or the patient is still feeling, we may not be able to infiltrate the perineum because she, al she already received the maximum dose. Okay, so how we will manage that? So as I told you in the beginning, we will load the syringe with 20 millimeter of, uh, 20 milliliter of the lidocaine, 1%. So how much I'm going to inject here? So it's recommended to inject seven on each side, 
Okay, so total of 14, and to keep the six millimeter, the remaining six millimeter for the perineal infiltration. Okay, so the problem most of the people are not waiting, doesn't they don't have time to wait for its effect, but the problem it takes time to uh, have the effect. So it takes like from five to 10 minutes to have an effect. So we need to inject and wait for 10 minutes to ensure that it is effective. So how I know that the injection is effective now, I have to do um, or to uh, test the patient for the anal uh, wink test, okay? Reflex, the anal wink reflex. So what is the anal wink reflex? When we touch the uh, perineal, uh, the, the anus, uh, this causes contraction of the sphincter. It's a reflex. So if this reflex is lost, that means the patient is under anesthesia. So I will try it bilaterally. So I will touch the right, uh, the right side and see. And if nothing, I will touch the left side and see. And if no effect, I can just pinch the skin of the anus of the in and see if there is no reaction. That means the patient now uh, is under pudendal nerve block. Okay. So before we start to doing our procedure, we have to ensure that it is working because failure is one of the possibilities and if it is failed then we will go to have another method of analgesia and what about the transcutaneous approach or transperineal approach uh, this while we we will uh, just palpate the ischial tuberosity okay and we will inject through them the the skin medial to it, okay? So we'll delbate it, and from outside, medial to the ischial tuberosity, we will inject our needle. We may need to, in, to put our fingers inside the vagina while we are injecting, not to hurt the baby, because sometimes, because the needle is very long, sometimes if we miss the direction of the needle, we may go inside the vagina as well. So we have to palpate from inside by our two fingers so that the needle will not touch the baby. Okay? And don't forget that you are going very near to the pudendal artery and vein. So before you inject the uh, amount of lidocaine, you have to just aspirate first. And if nothing came, then you can inject okay so what are the complications of uh, this technique first of all vaginal laceration if the patient uh, is uncooperative usually uh, this is in the second stage of flavor and the patient is continuously pushing and uh, she is so painful that's why she's requiring analgesia so she may be moving uh, and this may cause injury to you, injury to the baby or injury to the vagina itself. Um, the other complication is that the uh, complication of local anesthesia itself, if some intravasation happen, so the patient will get palpitation, dysarthria, drowsiness, confusion, sometimes loss of consciousness, hypertension and bradycardia, so it's a serious complication we need to take care of. And in case we touch the artery or the patient has any coagulopathy, we may lead to hematoma. And this hematoma can be either vaginal hematoma, can be hematoma in the ischiorectal fossa, or even it can be extended up to retroperitoneal hematoma as well. And if the patient is having infection, so we will introduce this infection deep 
in the layers, so she may develop later on subgluteal abscess or retrosoas abscess. And that's why if we detect any active infection, we will not go, we will not do this procedure. Some patient after delivery will complain of numbness in the gluteal region. And uh, we call it because sometimes we may touch uh, the nerve causing neuralgia. So ischial uh, region paresthesia or sacral neuropathy, all these complications sometimes from the injury of the nerve itself. So instead of just infiltrating around the nerve, we may touch the nerve itself causing damage and injury. And this will cause complication after that. And as I'm telling all the time, we may injure the baby sometimes by mistake, we may inject the local anesthesia into the baby uh, by mistake, okay? So please take care. And because the, the baby can't tolerate this maximum dose, his, all of his body weight is going to be only two and, ki uh, and a half kilograms to three kilograms. So you are dealing with a very tiny uh, body belt with a large dose of local analgesia. So uh, if, if you suspect that you injected the baby accidentally, we have to monitor the baby in a proper way. And the last complication is the failure of the procedure. And uh, the failure, the percentage of failure of procedure or success of procedure, so it's a success rate in transvaginal approach is about 50%. And actually it depends on the skills of the, the operator, the, the, the doctor who is doing uh, it, okay? So whenever you are well-trained and doing it many times, you, you will have more successful rate. But on average, 50% is for transvaginal approach and 25% for transperineal route, okay? So that's all for uh, budendal nerve block. So if you have any question, uh, don't forget to ask or invite question because it has a mark on the examiner sheet. Thank you.